Listen to the 48 Hours podcast for shocking murder cases and compelling real life dramas from one of television's most watched true crime shows. Go behind the scenes of each episode with award winning CBS News correspondents and producers in Post Mortem, a weekly deep dive. Listen to 48 Hours wherever you get your podcasts. This episode is brought to you by Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. Rated TV MALV. Viewer discretion advised. Maya Lopez has betrayed her mentor, the notorious Kingpin. Now on the run, she returns to her hometown to prepare for the biggest fight of her life. Don't miss Marvel Studios' hardest-hitting series yet. An epic five-episode event. Marvel Studios Echo. All episodes streaming January 9th, only on Hulu and Disney+. Plus. This is a Rogue Media Network podcast. Caroline, you should tell them about the newest thing that Bloody Happy Hour is doing. A Patreon. It's a Patreon. What is that? Um, that means you're basically like a VIP member and you get you get some perks. You maybe get like merch a little earlier. You get or exclusive merch. Exclusive merch. You could get um First dibs on signing up for a live show. You get episodes with no commercials. You get our video because our video is no longer available on YouTube. It is only on Patreon. And the most important to me is you get videos of our live shows, but also bonus episodes each month. But if you're on a Patreon, you're VIP, you're going to get more. Because I always have a lot of details I want to go to. I can law explain. I might read a book. (laughs) This is also going to be the exclusive place that Dirty Chat is going to go to. In order to hear the full content, it's going to be Patreon. Where do they go again? Patreon.com slash bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, I'm April. And I'm Caroline. And this This is your bloody happy hour. Caroline, are you ready for this? This is your newest guilty pleasure. It's the bloodiest part of your week. Did we say something about it also being happy hour? Show the end. Because we're about to be sipping on some murder. Bloody happy hour. Hey y'all, this is April. And this is Caroline. This is Thursday. It is Thursday. We're going to LA. Only LA? Well, we're starting in Pennsylvania because, well, we're still on a manhunt, but that's also where this person was born. Pennsylvania? Yes. So not Danello. We're not going to find Danello. I mean, we might. Okay. We might. We might find some, we might find him. We could escape convict. What about, so no Penn State and Sandusky? No, but um, you should definitely do that story. We should, and we should get friend Robin to come because she went to Penn State. I'm pretty sure she got molested by Sandusky. Wow. She, so she would basically be a victim, live victim on the show. Live victim. Yeah. I think that we should. We should. I think we should Let's do that. Do it. Okay. 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 Robin, right, you coming Robin. on? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> She's our next guest on the episode. So get ready. Um, this story is actually playing out in court right now. Oh. Here's here's what happened. Are we gonna have an ending? Listen before y'all listen. I'm gonna tell you at the end. This is why this bitch nope. has not seen Silence of the Lambs or Psycho or Texas Chainsaw Massacre because she watches news right now. And that's why I don't know what's going on right now because I'm still watching shit from 1980. <laughs> I know. And that's opposites. why I'm telling you what's going on right now because this happened in 2020. So it happened a while ago. Oh, man. Years. Okay. So I will tell you the situation, but I will tell you at the end because I want to pop your cherry at the end okay so amy harwick she was born in may 20th 1981 in pennsylvania cellarville she was adopted and um she grew up in pennsylvania graduated from 
North Penn High School, 1999. And then in 2001, she moved to L.A. And she was working as a Playboy model, a dance performer. And she did those things to help her pay for school because she studied psychology at Cal Poly. Mm-hmm. Um, that's where she got her master, like her master's degree in master's of arts degree at Pepperdine in okay. clinical psychology and a PhD from Institute of Advanced Study in Human Sexuality. Oh, sexuality. Geez. What is <laughs> sexual sexuality? Okay. <laughs> but I call it sexuality. Well, she was on it. So she eventually became a licensed marriage and family therapist. And she was a pretty well-known therapist in West Hollywood, specializing in family and sex counseling. So she was a sexapist. Love it. Sexapist, maybe? Yeah. Um, she would go on podcasts, TV shows. She had a YouTube channel, and she would just talk about all of her stuff. So she was pretty well-known, cute girl, obviously beautiful girl. Um so this is all like 2001-ish era. So she was living there for a while. And then around 2010, she started dating this guy named Gareth Pursehouse. Mm-mm. I mean, that is your first red flag. <laughs> no. Gareth. Mm-mm. I, I, I feel like I have a lisp when I say his name. Gareth Pursehouse. Yeah. Like that's what I sound. I feel like I sound like. So I'm just going to call him Pursehouse purse house he was a software engineer and an aspiring comedian and he also took on some side gigs as a photographer now i watched a video of a yeah video of him at a comedy show and it was some some group was up there doing maybe a podcast and i guess they were having people come up on stage and do like five minutes of their of their like stand-up comedy like they were they were like hey you come up for five minutes you do stand-up comedy hey you come up you do stand-up comedy and he came up and he it was the most awkward thing he all he did was make fun of the podcast host and it was it wasn't even no funny no no so he's no he was he's awkward and he's just not funny but he was good looking mm. so makes good up for it i guess engineer yeah he thinks he is so she starts dating this guy and friends of hers who met him kind of were like, eh, like kind of uneasy about him at first. They said, one of them said that when they were together, he was very possessive and that he was the type of person who would tell you things to bring you down to make yourself feel less. Um, he would joke about your appearance and he would just be like, oh, I'm just joking. Like, but like weird things to where you're like, why is that funny? Like, yeah. I, just, I just met you, and you're not funny, you're annoying kind of a thing. Um, he was, they said he was very vindictive and, like, like malicious, and that he was always scared of Amy breaking up with him. And they had, they were just dating for, like, a couple of months, okay? So, one friend of hers said, this is, like, a quote, I met Gareth around the time they started dating. There were points in the time where I just didn't want to hang out with her if she brought him along because I didn't get a good feeling about him. He just felt like he was very possessive. We would go out. She said they would go out, the three of them, because her boyfriend was always working and she always kind of felt like the third wheel. And she said that he would just randomly like start making out with her like full tongue, like in front of her. And she just was like, this is awkward and weird. And she just... It, that's just weird yeah. right and so she said if there was a guy that was looking at her that garrett purse house would like pull her close to him and just always made everything very uncomfortable and she just overall had a bad feeling about him he because he kept making fun of her and just it was just weird and finally that like they the friends kept saying like you need to break up with this guy. You need to break up with this guy. And so she did. She broke up with him. They dated for probably two months. Two months, okay? So, and that was 2010. So by 2011 and 2012, she had to file a restraining order against him because they 
would get in multi like I guess he would keep coming around and then they would get into arguments like he would track her down they would get into arguments and then he would start I get I don't know if she would maybe kind of talk to him a little bit but then he started to become abusive and so that's what led mm. to the restraining order so in the restraining order her statement was that there were multiple arguments where he choked her suffocated her pushed her against the wall kicked her dropped her down to the ground and would slam her face into the ground and punch her with a closed fist wow i think i would get a restraining order. yeah it's a pretty good reason okay so those things start happening she gets her restraining order and 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 moves on 2014 comes around she publishes a book New Sex Bible for Women, The Complete Guide to Sexual Self-Awareness and Intimacy. Okay. She must be great in bed, and that's why he was Clearly. Obsessed. he She was, uh, he was blinded by the, you know, situation. So in 2017, Amy meets Drew Carey. The act. The Drew Carey, the, the 10 things, the uh, Price is Right guy. Well, yeah. he's now the Price is Right guy. Mm -hmm. And the Whose Line Is It Anyway? Uh -huh. He was on that too. Uh -huh. um, they met at a party in Hollywood and they started dating. Oh. So she made a, so 2017 they started dating. And then 2018 on Valentine's Day, she went on the Price is Right. And that's where they announced their engagement. Oh, feels like a mismatch, is it? It seemed like, yeah. It's like one of those guys, I think he's just like super nice guy. Mm -hmm. And she obviously did not have a super nice guy before that, I guess. And now a word from our sponsors. All right, if you love smoothies or if you love your protein in the morning, you need to get you a Blend Jet. You can do that if you go into blendjet.com. If you enter the code BHH12, you get a discount. And let me tell you, these things are portable. They are easy to use. They can fit in your cup holder. You can have it at home or you can have it in your office like I do. Right this morning, I had my blueberry banana one mm, how was with it? some chia seed. It wasn't chunky or anything? It was very smooth. Wow. When I have it in my shaker, it is a little chunky. Oh, so this is wow. a great alternative. I love it. Um, it is battery powered, so all you have to do is plug it in every two weeks, and the battery never runs down. Oh, my gosh. I love battery-powered things. Go to Blendjet's and order you a Blendjet and get a discount. Thanks, April, for sharing. Did you know you could be putting oil and chemicals in your coffee? I love coffee creamer, but I don't think I've ever turned the bottle around to actually see what's inside. When I did, I found out many of my favorite creamers contain ingredients I would never intentionally add to my coffee cup, like canola oil, dipotassium phosphate, ew, and artificial flavors. Laird Superfood all started when big wave surfer Laird Hamilton needed morning fuel that could allow him to spend the entire day chasing the ultimate wave. He couldn't find anything in the market that met his ingredient standards, so made himself the ultimate plant-based creamer. Laird Superfood started and launched its first product, Original Superfood Creamer, in 2015. Laird Superfoods contain no artificial flavors, colors, or additives, and no sugars from highly refined corn syrup. All Laird products are sustainably sourced and thoroughly tested to ensure that you're incorporating the cleanest, finest fuel into to your routine. All Laird products are also made of all natural whole food ingredients and they are crafted from the highest quality all natural real food ingredients. Are you ready to feel more energized, focused, and supported? Go to LairdSuperfood.com and add nourishing plant-based foods to fuel you from sunrise to sunset. Use our promo code BOO at checkout to save 15% off your purchase today. Um, and so... Unfortunately, a few months after their engagement, they ended up calling it off. But it was amicable, 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 um, because here's kind of why it happened. There was like pressures of Hollywood and everything, because every time that they were like there was an article about them or they were photographed, it would almost trigger 
purse house Um. and he would like start reaching back out to her. And so she, she just was like, I don't need to be in the spotlight in any way. I guess you need to probably move out of Hollywood. Oh, I don't know, but it's not her fault. She's the victim. Um, so he would be triggered every time there was a headline about their relationship and the engagement, all this stuff. And so he like continued to stalk her after that. So then in January, so that was 2018. So January, 2020 comes around and she, Amy attends this, um, event called X biz awards. It was at the JW Marriott hotel and she has not seen purse house in, like nine years she hadn't seen what? him in that long because he would maybe contact her and like message her email her things like that but she had never actually seen him in so long and so at this event she saw him they ran into each other because he was a photographer at the event so he's there and he immediately gets like furious and starts crying Oh my gosh. And just at the side of her. So he starts acting like unhinged, delusional, like he's living in the past. He screams at her and just starts yelling at her and and like recites old text messages. Mm-mm. Yes. Yes. And so he says like she ruined his life and was saying that she was a, like such a bitch and just is like she need she's like fully embarrassed because he's they're at this event yeah. he's screaming he's actually working so that's weird um and so she goes to the side and she like was like let's have a conversation they ended up talking for about 45 minutes she goes into therapist mode and tried to de-escalate the situation so from a couple of things that i was reading and stuff Did if you break the restraining if you are order? ever well I believe, so here's the thing, the sh- restraining order was, and I've heard two different things. I I did hear that the restraining order will only last for five years. Okay. But one source I heard that it was in, in 2012 that she filed it, so that would mean in 2018, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, it would have expired in 17. But then somewhere else I heard it was 2015 that it expi- that it that she filed it and then it would have expired in 2020 which would have been now. So either way it had recently expired. And so but but if you are ever in this situation where you have a stalker guy or whatever try to talk to you you're supposed to just ignore them the best that's just the best thing to do in that situation is to just not just don't go, just ignore them, go the other way and run away. Yeah, you can't talk sense into them. Yeah, but with that being her job, I guess, I don't know, she just thought that was the best thing to do to de-escalate the situation. So she then goes to police and I, they say they there's really nothing else they can do. I mean, they've already got, I guess they could do another restraining order, but beyond that, what do you do? Mm-hmm. So then she and her friends are like, okay, let's let's just do. It's not like he followed her there. They were both there for work. It was it was a by chance that right. they ran into each other. Yeah, yeah. And so she contacts her parents and she says, if I die, I would like an open casket funeral and an elaborate headstone. She got pepper spray, a security system, and she did everything that she could to protect herself. She gave her friends her like location so they could track her. Um, and she told people if anything ever happens to me, it's him. Damn. And we've heard that before. (laughs) So this, this all, this event was January, 2020, right? Okay. So fast forward to Valentine's day of 2020. So just a few weeks later, um, Amy goes, uh, she went on a walk with her friend. She was going to a, uh, an event, uh, a burlesque show. She went with her friend and they left around 730. And she also had a roommate at the time. So she lived in a three-story house. 
Um, and her roommate lived on the first floor. It was a guy. And she lived on the third floor. So that's just kind of setting the scene. Um, to this to this party, she wore a pink dress and she had like a rosary beaded necklace with a cross on it. But while she was gone, the roommate was there and he was asleep. Um, and he woke up at one point thinking that he heard like the like a glass break or something break. And he just thought it was her like just being noisy. And so he like drifted back to sleep. Um, and then Amy later gets home a little after midnight. And when she got home, she sent her friend a text saying like, Oh, um, can you send me the pictures from tonight from, you know, we we're sitting on the green couch or whatever. So she's texting her friend and that was at one Oh two AM. Um, that was the last time her friend mm. heard from her because moments later, Amy was attacked inside her home. He had been in there laying in wait for four hours oh, gosh. in her room. So the noise that the roommate heard was him breaking in the house. So the security system. So I guess the security system. And I was like, did you have cameras? But like the I, roommate was in there. But the roommate was in the house. Like, I don't know how so this house is set up. So he must have broken in like a side window and then went upstairs. And I guess the roommate the roommate is a little funny. I don't know if he has like a. I, I don't know. I, I saw his test. He because trial was going on mm -hmm. and I was watching his him testify and. He's very flustery and very anxious, so oh. I don't know. I don't know. There was just something a little off about him, and I think he maybe was just completely like. Well, and not all systems are connected to the windows. Like, that's extra. Yeah, and but I was like, do they not have cam? I don't know. I guess you don't have cameras by a window, but extra. I don't know where he broke yeah. in. But. Gosh. I know, and I can't believe he, it's like a BTK. Like, the when you when you can just sit and wait. and wait that's what's horrifying calculated yeah so um she's getting attacked upstairs the roommate wakes up at this point and he hears it and he starts yelling for whoever it is to stop and he he doesn't want to go and approach because you're you should really never approach that situation because i mean you yourself could get hurt so what do you do run and get help he said he couldn't find his phone so he like climbs over I, I think there was like a um a brick wall that surrounded their pro the property and he like scaled the wall and like ran to a couple neighbors houses they didn't answer and I guess <laughs> it said he like some lady was walking on the street I'm like this is 1 a.m the worst this is 1 a.m. Some random person is walking on the street and this guy. So the roommate gets to use the person who's walking on the street's phone to call the cops. So the cops get there. And can you imagine like he's he's scaled this wall. So he's like kind of bloody and he's a little frantic and a little like different spastic. Yeah. And so the police immediately are like thinking he this guy did it because uh -huh. he's he has blood on him and he's acting very strange and he's saying he lived there but he couldn't he he couldn't he didn't have keys to unlock the house because he says he jumped over the <laughs> i mean it's a whole mess i'm watching this thing and i'm like oh, i do not blame those cops at all because yeah he looked very guilty so and now a word from our sponsors I'm your puzzle pal, and I'm going to tell you about my latest obsession, Wongo Puzzles. These things are the real deal, folks. They're high quality, handcrafted, and perfect for anyone who loves a good challenge, but doesn't want to dedicate their entire kitchen table to puzzles for a week. Trust me, I've been there. <laughs> and I might still be there. But I got one of these actually for Christmas. I loved it. I did it and I was so proud of myself. And they have all these cool designs and you need to go to wongopuzzles.com and use our discount, BHH, you get 10% off. And I really wanna know if you'll order one of these puzzles, How? what you think about it? Because it's so fun and I need to order like five. Cure hydration. If you 
are obsessed with your hydration like I am, this may be something good for you. This is something that is so easy. Forget about the Gatorade. That just dehydrates you even more. And if you don't like the taste of coconut water, try Cure Hydration. You can go to my offer link. It is zen, Z-E-N dot A-I slash B-H-H 20. This is vegan. It's no added sugars. It's just a little packet you could put in your water. Or if you're really smart during happy hour, you could put it into your Tito's. It is just as effective as an IV drip. And it's if you don't not like the taste of water, it's not as boring as water, not as sugary as the sports drink. And if you're an athlete, it'll give you the best performance. Or if you just get brain frog or headaches because you do not stay hydrated. Brain frog? Brain fog. <laughs> the brain solution frog. is cure hydration so go to that link enter the code you can go to my offer link it is zen z-e-n dot a-i slash b-h-h 20 cure hydration so the officers rush there they find her on the ground outside of the house oh. as if she had been thrown over her three-story balcony. Oh, my goodness. Struggling to breathe. And uh, they noticed that um, she had, like, lig- like marks around her neck, like she had been strangled, like strangulation. Um, and then they were pretty severe. They rushed her, to, rushed her to the hospital, and she was pronounced dead at 3.30 a.m. Mm. Back at the house, they find evidence of a violent struggle. The There was blood on the bedroom door. There was the beads from that rosary necklace she was wearing were scattered all throughout. And they led to the balcony, kind of. Oh, yeah. So yeah. they were, that's, what, that's how they, and then obviously she was out there. And so what he did was he like, Okay, I'll tell you in a second. So the roommate told the officers that he had heard the loud noise, that something woke him up earlier in the night, but he fell back asleep because he didn't think it was anything. He thought it was her. And that's when they were like, okay, that's that was him breaking into the house. And he was. that's when they figured out that he was like plotting and laid and wait and all that stuff. So this is a statement from the L.A. police. They said, when officers went to make entry, they found the victim on the ground beneath the third story balcony. The victim was gravely injured. She suffered significant injuries consistent with the fall. The investigation revealed possible evidence of a struggle in the upstairs as well as forced entry into the residence. A canvas of the area located further evidence of an intruder entering the property and then leaving after the murder. So then a medical examiner ruled her death a homicide, made notes in the autopsy that she died due to manual strangulation and blunt force trauma. Uh. So within 15 hours of the 911 call, they arrest Purse House um, on suspicion of murder. And his bail was set at $2 million. Okay. What's the percentage of that? Two thousand? Don't you have to pay like ten percent? I don't know percentage. Two. Because he bailed out or bonded out. Uh-huh. And then three days later he was rearrested. I don't know what, why he was rearrested, but then he was formally charged with murder and burglary. And then he had been in jail ever since. So I think some of her friends were like terrified after he was released and bonded out but i don't know how i don't know the ins and outs of how you go like when then why you go rearrest him i don't know but he was rearrested so the detectives start digging into her past and they find out all this stuff. maybe that's what they did they started digging into her past and they find out that she had filed two protective orders against him and all this stuff and blah 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 and then apparently he had previously so this is what they found he had previously broken into her apartment he had he had been sending her like gifts unwanted gifts once he had like taped flowers to her door um he would watch her 
inside of her home through other windows he caused like all this drama in the neighborhood he would constantly email her and her friends oh. he would like cause chaos with kids in the neighborhood um he would text her saying things are going to get worse um he so that's threatening why emails she said that to her mom because i was like why was she why after the fight did she say if i die it's him and i want to open casket yeah, she would send, um, yeah, threatening, th- he would send threatening emails to her and her friends, and uh, that's whenever we find out that she, uh, what had happened, like, w- with the, during one of their arguments as to why she filed the protective order, um, and I'd say that he had once pulled her out of the car, uh, or, like, pushed her out of the car while driving on the road. I feel like that's happened. When they were together? Yeah. Uh, when they were together, yeah, that was one of the abusive things he did. Left her out, left her on the side of the road with the bloody nose. Could have been worse. She could have had road rash and a broken collarbone. Um, and that he <laughs> suffocated her, punched her, slammed her head on the ground, kicked her, told her he would hit her because he was so mad and refused to get help while they were in the relationship. All that, that stuff. Mm. So they go and they... They finally figure out they're like, they believe that the January encounter from that show that they went to where he was a photographer, that that is what ultimately led to him spiraling into this obsession and then ultimately killing her. Gosh, he was already obsessed, but that just triggered him even worse. Yeah. So whatever she said to him. I mean, and she probably because of she was how she was so yeah. nice and caring, and he just is psycho and has a mental disorder, I guess. I mean, obviously. So after his arrest, he got his, you know, attorneys and they filed a motion trying to dismiss the case, saying there wasn't enough evidence, blah, blah, blah. But then the judge was like, yes, there is enough evidence. And they, some of the evidence was that there was. DNA that was collected from underneath her fingernails and from one of the doors in the house that was his DNA. Mm. Sounds like enough evidence to me. But then they also found a syringe at her house, like that was left on her bed, um, with a filled with a lethal dose of nicotine. What? Then that was found at her house. And then while they were did a search warrant for his house, they found an identical syringe with the same lethal dose of nicotine. So he had these two syringes of these this lethal dose of nicotine. He was going to kill her and then kill himself that way in a nonviolent way. But he couldn't control his anger. So he took his... He couldn't control it. So then the trial starts, started on the 29th, August 29th. Uh, Yeah. And this was just, this was, it, it was supposed to be already over. Okay. So prosecutors, which is the state, they claim that when Purse House heard the roommate scream, for help that that's when he threw her over the balcony. Damn. So, you know, he laid in wait, he attacked her, she starts screaming, the roommate is like, hey, what's going on? So it must roommate- be two different balconies because he jumped over something too. Which one? The roommate? Yeah. No, the room right. that was the outside like like brick like fence type of thing. The ba- she had like a balcony connected to her bedroom mm. that was on the third floor. That's where sh- she was uh-huh. thrown over. That's what they say she was thrown over. The- but his story is different. Defense's story is different. So that the yeah the prosecutor said that that's what triggered him to like oh I got to throw her over the balcony and get out of here because he's I guess he didn't know that the guy was there. I don't know. Twenty feet. It was 20 feet up that Damn. she was thrown from. Landing on the patio in the backyard, barely alive, and we know the rest. Died two hours later in the hospital. He pleads not guilty. His defense, in their opening statement, said that he felt depressed after running into her 
in January at that 2020 event. And that the evidence will show that running into her at that event sent him into a thick fog of depression and made him feel that the only way he could get relief from that pain was to go and talk to her. And? The evidence will show he never intended to kill her. And that he broke into her house. To talk to her. And he planned to use the nicotine-filled syringe to kill himself. (laughs) And that he did not throw her over the balcony. But she fell when she was trying to get away from him. Oh, my goodness. And he set this chain of motion that led to her death. But April, the attorney got COVID and the trial was paused (laughs) for a week and I was already done. And so I was like, I was supposed to have a verdict by now because this was supposed to be like a short, like a quick, short trial. And they had to pause it for a week. So they made him quarantine. You don't even got to quarantine anymore. I don't know, but I was like, I I couldn't not do it. I was already invested. So listen, if oh here's gosh, the one thing guilty. we know he's guilty, but so let's say he's guilty. If he's convicted, when he's convicted, he is gonna spend the rest of his life in prison. He's technically here's the weird thing. He's technically eligible for the death penalty. Um, due to special circumstances of him, like, laying in wait. Uh-huh. However, in January 2022, which would have been after the murder, uh-huh. good old Governor Gavin Newsom announced that California's death row penalty would be dismantled by the end of 2024 so i don't think they'll have so i don't know if he will get the death penalty even if he's convicted to get it but either way i believe he will spend life in prison but i'm so sorry to tell you that i don't have a final well so now i just have to stop doing cases (laughs) that trials are happening but it was just so it was just wild and it was just a whole uh, yeah it was a thing Well, you know what? I was wrong because remember, it was at the Grant Solomon story where um, she got pregnant by him really quick. They got married like really quick. Yeah. And I was like, you got to know a person. You got to be with the person for two years to really know a person. And because they got married really quick. Well, hell, she was only with him for two two months. months. She found out who he was really quick and did right and got away. But he just latched on to her and she could not get away. And I'm surprised it didn't happen sooner. That's so sad. It's and it's crazy that like they don't find anybody else to get obsessed with. Yeah. After nine years, like nine years. After nine years. And so, so the good news is you can, you can go and it's not, it's not a live trial, but they release the footage the next day. Mm -hmm. So you can go watch it. Gosh. And he looks, he looks completely different. Oh. He's gained like 30 or 40 pounds. Have they? His hair, he has this weird little, it's gross. Did they diagnose him with anything? No, but I did. Just psychopath. I don't know. Hmm. Casey, diagnose them for us. Yeah, we need to have that diagnosis. There's hey. something wrong when you can get that obsessed. I, I don't understand. Yeah. I, and there's, I mean, there's plenty of people and you're in LA. There's plenty of options. Plenty. And there's plenty of people who are just probably as crazy as he is i mean it's it's la but i don't know i don't know and then like apparently she had texted drew carey um like just like in january of 2020 because i guess she just i feel like they had a good relationship and it was everything was good and he she was like you know i'm i'm just just thinking about you and just wanted to see if you wanted to catch up and like go to lunch or whatever. And, Mm -hmm. um, he was like, he, 
he felt like, I think that was like, I don't know if he's married now in his real life, but he basically said like, that was like the love of his life. And oh. he was just so excited to go meet with her and have lunch. And he just felt like it was just this horrible death that had like it, he lost a piece of himself whenever yeah. he found out that she because they really died. couldn't be together because of crazy dude yeah. not because they had a bad breakup or because yeah. they didn't want to be just yeah. because she couldn't live a normal life so i don't know just these domestics are really Gosh, just unfortunate people are crazy i know so there you go crazy 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 amy harwick the therapist the murder of hollywood therapist uh, sex therapist yep she was too good at the sex too good in bed oh it's sad 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 well i guess we'll find out when you gotta watch the instagram well, page i guess you gotta keep up uh, <laughs> find out on instagram maybe i'll post it on our uh you know patreon you can actually go there and you can hear a little bit about old dirty chat uh, who's that oh she'll post it we'll release it on the quickie and we'll release it on the next episode but we know he's guilty it'd be crazy if he wouldn't be Oh, it would be. I, I can't. It's pre- It seems pretty obvious. So obvious. So there well, you go. Well, good story. Love it, love it, love it. I have not heard not one thing about this case. I had neither until, you know, I did. But just, yeah, I didn't hear. I didn't know anything about it either. Just because you saw the court, that her court case was going on, you just watched it? Mm-hmm. Oh, yep. Okay. All right, y'all. Caroline took us to court. That is it. Send us some stories because I have not been able to get inspired. So if you got a good story you want us to cover that's not too long, it's a little crazy at work right now, and football season's real crazy for me. So send me some good stories. You short should do stories. Aaron Hernandez. That, but that's the thing. That is a big story. I know, I know. I would have to like watch the documentary. I would have to read the book. Like you, it's like doing OJ and no, <laughs> no, you can't half-ass stories like that. I know it is. It and is. then when we do that story, we got to bring Pete back. That's true. That's true. That's true. All right, right. We'll see y'all next time. Don't forget to stay aware, stay alive, and always be DTF. Hola, yo soy Jackie y yo soy Jessica. <laughs> Y esto es Zona del Crimen. Un podcast donde hablaremos sobre casos de crímenes reales y eventos impactantes que han quedado marcados a través del tiempo. Recuerden que nos pueden seguir en Facebook, Instagram o donde escuches tus podcasts favoritos. Hey, I'm Blair. And I'm Brittany. And we're the host of By the, the Cover, Cover Podcast. Podcast. <laughs> we cover everything from mysteries, thrillers, romance, chiclet, and even some smut. Don't forget the smut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're so excited to get this thing going and share this with you guys. We've been talking about this for months and it's finally, finally happening. Yes. Special shout out to Rogue Media for helping us with this. For sure, for sure. <laughs> you can find us on Instagram at by the cover underscore podcast. You can also find us on Facebook and TikTok, so don't forget to give us a follow on those two also. And we are so excited to dive into some of our favorite books and share those with you. We can't wait. Hope you love it. Hi, and welcome to Bustles and Bangers with your hostess, Rachel and Christopher. I love it when you say my name. And you didn't say hi. I didn't. You, you just kept going. I'm going to introduce the book. I'm <laughs> not reading it it's because I don't like reading. Girls like cowboy butts, you know, and those jeans don't hide anything. Mm. <laughs> Find us on Instagram at Bustles and Bangers or on RogueMediaNetwork.com.
This has been a Rogue Media Network production. Thank you.